Festival. And uh, let's jump right into it. We've heard a lot about what's going to be happening in the next season. What are you most excited about seeing or getting to do? Um, I'm a huge, well, I'm a huge fan of the novel, so I'm uh, I'm excited about the fact that we're sort of Harris uh, villains, if you like, that's a right phrase. He was always the most um, sympathetic to me because he was, a guy, he was a guy who tried to stop and had a chance to stop. And I'm really excited about seeing Will Graham work with a guy like that because I think they have a lot of similarities. And I think for me, when Will realizes, at that point when he realizes this guy's trying to stop, I think there's huge sympathy and that, that will be a really interesting guy now. So, uh, Excited to uh, get to Goes to you know, it's an interesting thing. Um, somebody else used the same phrase in terms of what it gets away with. You know? I mean, I think we, we, yeah, I mean, you know, I think there's a standards of practices set of guidelines, and you know, we work incredibly closely with NBC to make sure we stay on the side of that where, you know, um, they're happy that we're, we're conforming. And, and a lot of that is often about, the version of things we've shot is often a lot more boring by showing. And often it's us in the end who go, you know, we don't need to use those shots, actually we can hide it or suggest it. I also think we very, it's not that often we show the actual killing, we show the aftermath. So it's a beautiful reveal of something that, Hopefully it's beautiful and aesthetic and that's important to the show and you know, whereas it's very rare on the show we actually will see somebody being viciously brutally stabbed or, or what have you, you know, and I think and I think I think it's easier to show, you know, in a way a beautiful still life than it is to show people being hacked and chopped and the actual visceral moment of violence. And I also feel like you know, there can be a gratuity to that that we avoid. The story starts from, from the body. Um, but we work very closely with those guys, and then I think, for me, just kind of the fact that it's beautiful helps people absorb it. And I also think, because generally they're, they're unreal, they're, they're very purple, they're very baroque, they're very aesthetic, which also allows an audience to go, the chance of that actually happening to me is pretty slight. You know, if you're doing a show where somebody gets mugged on the train and beaten up and stabbed, people, I, that's tough to watch because I go, you know, I do. I go home like that every day, but when it's like someone who's been turned into a tree, you kind of go, what are the chances? You know, so I also think that's kind of, uh, that's a part of, part of how we uh, are allowed that, that sort of, you know, leeway. There's something really hypnotic about the show. When you watch it, no matter how horrible the things are, or even if they're just a mistake, you can't look away. Yeah. It just draws you in. Is that right? Yeah, well, great. And I mean, that, that's, you know, I mean, it's, it's it shows... Um, paced a certain way. I mean, it's got more deliberate than more shows. And I think, I think there's a certainly for me, there's a fever. Even though I think emotionally it's always very grounded and rooted, there's a sort of feverish quality to the show. You know, it's not quite real. And I think that's part of that hypnotic thing. It's slightly. I always feel like when I'm watching it, you know, what we strive for is it's slightly like one of those nightmares that you're kind of half aware, you're half awake and you're watching it, but at the same time you can't wait for it. Slightly heightened reality. Almost surreal. Yeah, yeah, and, and we talk a lot about surreality. You know, when we're breaking the episodes, we will say, you know, where's the surreal here? Where's the horror? Where's the sort of imagery that takes us to that other other place? You know, we, we never just want to write. You know, we never just want to do that straight procedural episode. I think it's always got to have that. It's kind of a dream life, really. I think the I think the music also has a lot to do with that. I mean, how what do you enjoy the music? Do you ever listen to the music outside of the show? <laughs> um, I'm usually because uh, we, there's only about two months in the year we're not making the show. I'm usually listening to it the whole time anyway because we're editing and, and reviewing. So 
usually in that two months I'd want to listen to something with you know uh, a little more uh, lightness uh -huh. but I, I think the music is uh, I think Brian who does the music is, is amazing I thought the score he did for the finale of season two with the ticket clock was mind blowing you know? and I hadn't heard it because we're so often working against time so much I had no idea he was doing that until I was in the final mix and watched the episode and listened to it and it's just like so sort of, sort of almost came to it as the audience did when it aired and was just like wow you know? it kind of blows you away right but it also made you easy to watch that whole finale just being kind yeah. of easy you know and I thought, I thought what he pulled off there was really nice how do you collectively from um, yeah, it all comes from character really so I mean usually because the show in the end is about Will and Hannibal and Jack and, and that set of characters and, and we're not really a case of the week show even though we have them like whatever the case is it's reflecting on those guys and, and, and it's as much about them as the killer so we normally start from what what's the next step on the journeys we want to take for Will or Jack or, and then we go okay so what's the story we can use to, to tell that and, and you know and, and, and the sort of the murders and the killers come out of that and then we sort of go okay so who's the person they're after that can reflect what we want to say about them and, and often the sort of nature of the murder is almost the last thing we get to um, I mean, we have a file, and we have a list of, you know, we have a, a sort of file of pictures and images, and would this be a tableau? And people are always on the internet finding some very strange things um, and bringing them into work. I, I, we must all be on some FBI list by now. Um, I was actually, I was watching it with a friend, and he said to me, and he was, he had not seen it. He was watching it in the middle of season two, and he said, "This is amazing." And he said, "You know, you have to think about the fact that somebody wrote this, and what is going on in their heads." Do you want to talk about that? Well, the excuse I always have is there's normally six or seven of us in there, so you can't blame you know you can't blame any one person. There isn't any there isn't like one dark psychopathic mastermind in the writers' room. Um, there's sort of this yeah all the seven parts of it. You know you bring them together like a horcrux. Not to mention Harris. Yeah, yeah and, and, and Harris. I collectively agree. Like for instance, he brought Abigail back after kind of, you know. Yeah, I think I mean I think that's the joy of working in a writers' room. You know, it, it is. It's this great story engine for debate, and in the end, the best idea wins, and you sort of throw things out and you come back to it, and you gradually get to the story you want to tell. And when someone, when, when you when you get it, it just feels right, and then you know, you know, and you go back. And I think, and I think, and that comes for whether it's the tableaus and the crimes, or for you know, let's. let's bring Abigail back at the end or let's you know let's um, you know who, who's the only person Hannibal could frame for this it's children you know I mean because we, we were kind of going how the hell do we get rid of the Chesapeake River and then someone one day went it's children and we were all like oh now you're talking you know and, and sort of um, so it's it's kind of fun in there we just sit around and throw it around to some sticks. how much of Harris's writing is kind of looming large a, a lot I mean Brian and I are both huge fans. I mean, Brian, I'm, I'm, I'll use his phrase because it's better than anything I can think of. You know, he says we're, we're Thomas Harris mashup DJs. And it's kind of great. So we, we'd steal things from one book. You know, we're, we're not telling it in chronology, but an awful lot of what's in the show is from Harris. Be it the lines of dialogue um, or, or prose description in the book that we make dialogue. And I think. And also the spirit of those killers in his books, which again are very purple and are very sort of baroque and operatic. You know, there's never someone there who's just you know stabbing women because he's impotent. You know, it's it's they're they're, they're they're these grand towering sort of psychological creations, and we try and we try and do that with our you know with our killers as well. So so he's a huge touchstone for us, and, yeah, and he's a well that we keep going back to. Yeah. I know a lot of the. No, they're, they're, oh, are we? Okay. Um, I know a lot of the fans really appreciate those little details that you put in. Do you enjoy interacting with the fans? Do you do that much? And, like, yeah, I mean, I've never done a show. Uh, I came into the show like midway through season one, and I, I've never done a show where the sort of fan intensity and interaction is so strong. And it's been fascinating to me, and I kind of love it. And they're, 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 you know, incredibly loyal and strong, and the sort of fan art, the sort of the creativity that is spawned out there is kind of amazing to me. And I read all these things that people read into the show, and 
you're like, wow, I wish I, wish I had been there. I wish I had been there. <laughs> and, and I think that's also because I think in the end, whenever possible in the show, we never state anything. We leave gaps. We, we don't say, this is what I'm thinking. What I love is that, and I think that one of the reasons maybe the fans love the show so much is they fill in those gaps with their own version and I'm amazed with sometimes to read what some of those are because it's the op- might be the opposite you know and I think that interaction with a piece of art is, is what's when you know it's working and then to go out here with like 4,000 of them and just see that response it's kind of humbling to be honest that was pretty amazing thank you so much thank you thank you very much